Hey everybody, it's Bug out here. Welcome back to Tommy Team. Last time we did Chloe's King. This time we do Demons and Death. Having fun? Just what are you doing? <laughs> huh? Ah, oh, Naomi! And why is there a fish bones in this hand? You seem relaxed. The quarantine's got everyone in a fit. <laughs> yeah, I know. Just escaped from the middle of that mess. Huh? What do you mean? Well, let's start inside. Can't let them find me here. <laughs> So you brought these bones with you? Well, yeah. Can you reconstruct them? This is nonsense. How do you know this tells us anything? I don't. Yeah, we get those bones you'll do it, right? There might be something. Um, I can see arguing is a waste of time. Fine. All right. I'll reconstruct the body. You pick the head. I can see why your marriage didn't last very long. <laughs> I don't care. <get it. laughs> oh, that's weird. Find the clever location of Pigs. Please find the name by the unbeaten twins that we will need to record them.
other fragments that begin at me have been placed, does this mean there's a missing piece of bone? In any case, the skull can't be fully put together in this state. Unless the missing section is found, there's nothing more that can be done to this skull. This individual? Hmm. If it was caused by physical trauma, then there's something unusual about it. That would be. Yes. There's no damage to the clothing. Either there's a reason why, or this blood didn't come from this person. Is this a key? Maybe the little guy will be able to find out something about it. Hmm. Is this a syringe? And drugs? If this skeleton belongs to someone with a criminal history, whoever this is might be kept in the FBI's criminal database. If I ask a little guy about this, it might be easy to find out just who this person is. skull is the section from the mental tubercle to the ankle. Clothing that swallowed pieces of human bone. Don't tell me. So it was like I thought. After Chloe swallowed the bone fragments, the mysterious foci appeared in her body. There's something in this bone, some kind of pathogen. Oh, Dr. Kimishima, that man came by a moment ago. That man? Who are you talking about? The, uh, friendly guy. He said something about having finished reconstructing the body. Ah, you mean gay. All right, now we can observe the corpse as a whole. I've gone ahead and put the skull with the rest of the skeleton. You can look at them whenever you like. Good, you're on top of things. Can you tell me what you've observed from it? Oh, right. There wasn't much to get from the body, though. The person was roughly 185 centimeters tall. A histologic examination of the bone detected 15 types of amino acids remaining. There was also a very high concentration of nitrogen. I've sent the results of the analysis to your computer. Please check it out when you need to. Good. I'll look into it. It's possible to examine the body now, too. Yes. The female is completely broken. In a human skeleton, the femur is... Yes, it was the same in the case when that girl Veronica was thrown off the bridge, but the femur is the strongest among all the bones in the human body. What could have broken so easily? Hmm. What is this damage to the joint? It's hard to think that an external force could cause this kind of This key is for a key. Let's see. This is a very unique key. Matches? What could a key like that be used for? 
probably a safe or something else high security. Oh, there's a number on it as well. Hmm, I see. Can you find out where whatever it goes to is located? I, uh, I can look into it, but... What's wrong? Is there a problem? I don't have a clue where this key came from. It'll take a long time to find out any specifics about where this key goes. That's fine. It's still better than me trying to find this out by myself, right? Well, we are a nationwide organization. Fine, I'll take the key. I'll let you take this. Little guy, I need you to analyze something. Of course. Is this a blood stain? Right. I need you to check the skeleton's DNA and see if that blood came from the same person. Ah, uh, no problem. Give me a moment. Hmm. Do you have the results yet, little guy? Hey, don't rush me, please. The results just came in. It seems that the DNA matches the bloods from the same person. Huh, I see. If that's the case, what kind of hemorrhaging is it? If this hemorrhaging wasn't caused by physical trauma, then... Hey, little guy. Could you analyze something for me? Sure. Huh, uh, haven't I already analyzed this for you, Dr. Kimishima? Yes, but I want to know more details. Like what? We know now that the blood stain comes from the same person as these bones, but there was no obvious damage to the deceased's clothing. Can you investigate in detail into what kind of hemorrhaging would have caused that blood stain? I see. All right. Can you give me some time for that, please? Of course. I'll be counting on it. Little guy, I need this damage analyzed. Right away. This. What's the matter? Uh, nothing. A bone abrasion caused this damage. Bone abrasion? What do you mean? Normally, wherever bones meet, there's a layer of fibrocartilage. In this case, the knee, that pad is known as the meniscus, that prevents damage like this from occurring in most people's bodies. The signs of wear I see here are consistent with the bones grinding together. Hmm. So these abrasions here were apparently caused by... Blood. Indeed. This would mean that the meniscus was lost while the person was still alive and moving. But what would cause this to happen? Little guy, can I bother you for a moment? Yes, of course. How may I help you? I want your opinion on this fractured femur. Okay. Just a second. Well, anything? Well, um, what's this? This bone is hollow on the inside. I'm not surprised it broke if it was like this. Hmm. Did this fracture occur while the person was still alive? I can't say about the fracture, but the loss in bone density must have occurred while the person lived. It seems safe to assume that the fracture was caused by the decrease in bone density then. Hey, little guy, can you analyze this marking here? Yes, of course. Let's see. Hmm, how does it look? Can you learn anything from it? Yes, uh, first of all, the damage was done recently. There's no discoloration on the bone tissue in the area that had been damaged. Hmm, I see. Does this mean that whatever happened here occurred after the person died? That's right. I don't think it could have happened any other way. From looking at the damaged area, it seems the bone had been shaved away using a tool, like a router. A router? The only reason I would expect that to happen would be... Right. The staff at USAMRID was using this bone for research. There's a good chance they shaved a sample from the bone in order to study it. Yes, he needs small fragments for the high detail analysis. That's likely what happened to this bone. Hmm. Wait a second. What's wrong? The researcher at USAMRID was infected while he was studying this bone. Using a router on the bone would cause particles of pulverized bone to be ejected in the air. If the researcher came down with the disease after performing that procedure, then... Abnormal decrease in bone density, a lack of cartilage. What we can deduce from these two events is... Yes, both these conditions indicate a weakening of the skeletal system. Furthermore, I believe that both these processes happened while the person was still alive. If these conditions allow us to infer anything, it would be that this person was severely debilitated by the time of death.
Hello, Dad? I need you to analyze something. Yes, of course. Well, what's this? I found this in the deceased's personal articles. I get the feeling that it may be drugs. I see. So you want me to run this through our criminal database? You're good at picking up on these things. This is the kind of thing that we do at the FBI, after all. I'll look into what's in these ampules and see if the syringe has been used. It's going to take a while, so you'll have to give me time. Of course. I'll keep investigating the corpse. Uh, Dr. Kimishima, the analysis of the syringe is complete. The syringe? The one that was in the case? Oh, yes. It's about that. Interferon, acyclovir, ribavirin, lamivudine. Slow down a second. What are you talking about? Um, it's the medicines that were confirmed to be in the syringe and the ampules. All that was in there? Seriously, I don't understand. Every antiviral drug on the record is in this list. Antiviral drugs? There was even an ampule of Ashvins in there, too. Ashvins? It's a medicine that hasn't been fully authorized by the FDA. It's an excellent antiviral drug, but there were some problems with side effects. Huh. Just what were these reported side effects? Okay, let's see. Uh, Ashvins is an antiviral drug. It draws on the patient's calcium to suppress viral activities. If used in excess, the subject will become calcium deficient. The body then draws calcium from the bones and it leads to all sorts of complications. A drug that draws calcium from the bones. Well, that isn't its purpose, of course, but that is what happens. I see. Something bothers me about this, though. The deceased had a large amount of antiviral drugs in his possession, along with a dangerous, unapproved drug that caused calcium deficiency in the human body. Yes, it seems that these can be used together. The large amounts of antiviral drugs found in the corpse's personal effects, and an ampule of Ashvins, a dangerous antiviral reagent. The reason that Ashvins was never approved was because... Indeed, Ashvins consumes large amounts of calcium from the human body. A 50 kilogram person's body contains roughly one kilogram of calcium. 99% of that is in the bones and teeth. In other words, the side effect of the Ashvin's drugs is... Yes. What first comes to mind would be an abnormal decrease in bone density. Considering the information that's been gathered so far, this person likely administered the Ashvin's drug to... Yes, themselves. The first piece of evidence supporting that is... The complete fracturing of the femur, the strongest bone in the human body. Continuing on, the second point would be... Yes, the loss of the meniscus in the left knee. Thus, we can deduce that the person's weakened skeletal system was due to the side effects of the Ashman's drug. I have a bad feeling about this.